All right, let's talk about this concept of the mole. This is usually a topic that's pretty challenging for students, um, and I don't really know why. It doesn't have to be. Um, a mole is a pretty simple concept uh, because a mole is just a number. Um, it's actually, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a word that represents a number, I guess I would say. So just like the word dozen represents the number 12, the word mole in chemistry has its own number. Uh, that number is this. 602 with 21 zeros tacked onto it. That's a, a huge, huge number. Uh, we always simplify that down with scientific notation to this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You need to commit that to memory or have it written down. Um, we call that Avogadro's number. Avogadro was a, um, a chemist in the oh, mid 1800s. Um, and we'll talk more about him, but I, I do have a picture of him because he's just such a funny looking guy. I always like to show this. What a weirdo. Uh, anyway, so um, Avogadro's number is used in chemistry for lots of different things, uh, primarily uh, counting numbers of atoms or molecules or particles. Uh, so let's figure out how this works. Um, so here's a question I'll start you with. You know that a dozen means 12. So if you have a dozen eggs, what's the mass of that? Well, I don't really know the answer to that <laughs> because the answer would depend on the mass of each egg, right? Um, but here's what you can say for sure. The mass of a dozen eggs is gonna be pretty different than the mass of one dozen bowling balls, right? And that's because the mass of an egg is really different than the mass of a bowling ball. So you can expect the mass of 12 eggs to be uh, quite a bit less than the mass of 12 very heavy bowling balls, right? And that's the way it works in chemistry too. So just like you couldn't really equate the number of grams of, of eggs to bowling balls, like lithium atoms, for example, are so much smaller than lead atoms that if you had a dozen lithium atoms, they would, it would have a much smaller mass. You know, each lithium atom is only 6.941, on average, um, atomic mass units, where a lead is this big, fat, heavy atom at 207.2 .2 atomic units. So they're, they're just, um, atomic mass units, excuse me. Uh, so they're just such different sized atoms that you can't expect the same number of each to have the same mass total, right? And so just like you can't um, expect 12 lithium atoms to have the same mass as 12 lead atoms, uh, you can't expect Avogadro's number of lithium atoms to have the same mass as Avogadro's number of lead atoms. We're just substituting the word dozen for um, moles, right? Uh, and a different number too. Okay, so that brings us to this concept of molar mass. So uh, if you were to have uh, Avogadro's number of atoms of a single element, uh, you would call that the molar mass. It's, it's the mass in grams of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element, right? And it's equal, and it, this is where it gets easy actually, it's equal to the element's atomic mass, uh, but it's reported in grams instead of atomic mass units. And so when you look at the periodic table, you have these squares where these element symbols live. Uh, so this one's aluminum. And um, the atomic um, mass is, is listed down here. This is the average uh, weighted atomic mass. We're now gonna call that the molar mass in grams. And so the 26.98 AMU, uh, that is now just 26.98 grams. That means that if you had Avogadro's number of atoms of aluminum, if we had that many atoms of aluminum, then on the scale, the scale would say 26.98 grams, okay? So let's calculate some molar masses. This is, this is pretty easy. So, so um, a lot of times we're looking for the molar mass, not just of a single element, but of a compound. And uh, it's really just as simple as looking at the compound formula, uh, seeing how many of each atom are present, and then um, summing up the atomic molar masses of each element. So if we, if we had this compound here, CO2, okay? 
we know that, that the chemical formula tells us basically how many atoms there are of each element. So we have a single carbon and two oxygens. So here are the symbols from the periodic table. We have, um, you know, each carbon is 12.01. We're gonna add that to uh, two masses of oxygen, each at 16.00. And then on your calculator, you just uh, add those numbers up and make sure that you report your final answer um, using the lowest number of decimal places provided, which is two in all these, so that's easy enough. Um, and then, that, so that's pretty easy to do. Uh, with a compound um, that might be a little bit more complicated, like let's look at uh, K3PO4 although that's not really that much more complicated. It, it's not complicated once you know how to do this stuff. Uh, the mass of each of these individual um, potassiums is uh, 39.10, um, and we have three of them, right? So um, instead of writing it out 39.10 plus 39.10 plus 39.10, I'm just gonna multiply this by three. Oh yeah, and then we're gonna add that to the mass of one phosphorus atom, which is, uh, uh, let's see, 29, no, 30.97. And then we've got four oxygen atoms to, um, to, to take into account here. So I'm just gonna multiply the mass of four um, oxygens, and that is uh, four times 16, right? There we go. And of course, all of the numbers that we're adding together all have two decimal places, so we're gonna report our final answer. Um, doesn't matter how many significant figures are there with addition, remember, we just want to carry the lowest number of decimal places in our final answer, okay? H2O, if you're, um, now it's probably getting easy for you, but uh, the mass of a hydrogen is 1.008, and then we have two of those, right? And then we're going to add that to the mass of just a single oxygen, which is 16 again. And so, you know, you just add them up. Uh, again, here we're limited in our decimal figures by uh, two decimal places. Um, so you, there's some stuff to look out for with decimal points because some of the uh, molar masses from the periodic table have three decimal places and some only have two. Uh, and then some have one, which uh, we, we'll do down here with lead. Copper to nitrate. This is where you have to be good at taking the name and putting it into a chemical formula. And then from the chemical formula, you can get the molar mass. But you can see how important it is to get the chemical formula right because the subscripts, if they're wrong, you're gonna have a, um, an incorrect molar mass, which can throw all of your calculations off uh, down the road. So we would just turn this into a, um, into a formula. Here we have Cu with its oxidation state of positive two, which is gonna be the, end up being the subscript for our nitrate ion, which we'll put in parentheses uh, with a two. Now here is where you have to remember that the outside subscript, if you have a subscript that's outside the parentheses, that is gonna distribute by multiplication to all of the subscripts inside the parentheses, right? So here we've got a single copper um, to account for, so that's um, uh, 63.55, and we've got two nitrogens, each are 14.01, and then we've also got um, two times the three is six um, oxygens, right? So the biggest mistake people make is, is getting the formula wrong and they don't have the right subscripts and then they don't have the right number of atoms, they've counted them up um, wrong and you get um, the wrong molar mass. Now, um, with lead and some other uh, elements out there, we have a, a kind of a funny thing. The, the formula here for lead two carbonate is Pb, uh, Pb, oh, and positive two, carbonate's two, PbCO3. Okay, so lead has its own molar mass of 207.2, okay? And so you'll see here that some of the um, masses from the periodic table uh, have just one decimal place. That means that your final answer is gonna be limited to the lowest number of decimal places, which in this case is gonna be uh, just one. We'll go through this one. Uh, and then we're gonna add that to uh, just a single carbon, 
12.01, and then we're gonna add that to three oxygen masses, each at uh, 16, so three times 16. Okay, so you can see that our, our carbon is two decimal places, our oxygen is two decimal places, and our lead is only uh, one decimal place. That means that when you, when you add this up and your calculator spits out an answer, you've got to round the decimal to just one decimal place. Okay, that's it. I hope this helps. It's an important skill that you've got to get right. It's one of those things that can uh, throw you off in a big way, especially when you have a long problem to, to get through. So uh, we'll do lots of practice with these. Thanks.